All right, it's good to see y'all here this evening. We're gonna get started with 340 in your hymnals, nearer, still nearer. Good to see y'all here at Anchor Baptist Church on this rainy Wednesday evening. We're gonna get started with nearer, still nearer, 340. Nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. 340 in your hymnals. Let's stand and we'll sing. Nearer, still prayer list. Anybody needs a new prayer list this evening? Good to see all y'all here this evening. Couple different things coming up. Uh, let me make a note real quick. Here and then we'll open. All right. Oh boy, I actually looked at this here. All right, this Sunday, April 30th, uh, immediately after service, is a VBS prep meeting. Um, so if you can meet in the auditorium right after church, we're going to start going over the theme, going over uh, the just the, the basic outlets for the play and whatnot. So if you can be here, if you can be a help, please come in. And we're going to work with what we got. And I'm assuming VBS is going to be, at least it's in the back, it'll probably be the same time, which is usually the middle of August, or middle of July. OK, so that'll be middle of July. Um, and then that's also going to be church cleanup day. Um, there's some jobs outside that need to be done. I believe there's some jobs inside that need to be done. Dad has a complete list. Um, 
the list is first come, first serve, so if you can show up and, yes, now is the time to sign up for a job. That's how it works with Dad. Um, but he's got a list of stuff that needs to be done um, and just some little things just to get, keep the church up and running. Uh, it's going to be bring your own lunch on that day and eat in between jobs. But you always get a job before sitting down to eat because then everybody else draws a good job and you'll end up replumbing the baptism. All right. There's a lot of sandwich fixings left over from the funeral today. So if you want to eat that on Sunday, those will all be in the back. Um, Sunday, May 7th, debt reduction, and I believe that'll be door hanging at 2 p.m. We're going to confirm that with Brother Clipper. Sunday, May 14th, it'll be Mother's Day event and nursing home at 2 o'clock. May the 20th, which is a Saturday, uh, there's an escape room event that Elise is doing. So if you want to be a part of that, see her so she can get signed up ahead of time. There's a cookout on Sunday, May 21st, and then street preaching afterwards and then choir practice on the 28th. Also on, I believe it is Monday, May 29th, I will confirm that, is May 29th, I believe, is Memorial Day. Memorial, I always get Memorial Day and Labor Day mixed up. It's Memorial Day. Um, Pastor John Black, he's got a church up in Laurel, Maryland, is getting a bunch of churches together to go and hand out tracts on the mall during the Memorial Day parade. If you are interested in going to that, please let me know. Uh, we're gonna get a group together, go up, go to the metro station and metro in because you're not going to be able to park and hand out a bunch of tracks on that day. So let me know if you want to be a part of that. It's going to take some coordination ahead of time. Uh, if you've never ridden the DC metro, ooh, the DC metro is, is doable. I, I did it one day um, for uh, Reads Across America, which is a blessing if you've ever done that. Um, but it is you need somebody there who knows what they're doing. It helps a lot. Monday. Yes. It's, a, it's whatever day Memorial Day is. Uh, Pastor Tim Black, I believe, is going. Um, I believe. I believe he reached out to Brother Ryman as well. He's got several churches that he wants to go and do that with. So if you want to go, you're able to go. Let's see who? Yes. If it's on the East Coast, Brother St. John will be there. We went to a family game night at Tim Black's church, I don't know, a month ago, and Brother St. John was there with half his kids. Okay, God bless you, brother. This is about a two-hour drive for him, but they don't mind going. Um, on that, and I meant to put him on the list, um, but I'm just going to do this real quick. On the road, put Brother St. John on there. Uh, his name is uh, Stephen. And um, his oldest son, anybody? Brother St. John's, I know his second oldest. I know his second oldest. Which one? Is it Nathaniel? Nathaniel, it is Nathaniel's. Isn't he great? My prayers are for no one. Um, Brother St. John and Nathaniel are in... Zambia on a missions trip. They're flying back Saturday, so keep them in prayer. Um, other than that, any, any other events coming up? Anything I missed? All right. Uh, prayer list, salvation. Anybody got anyone you can take off of salvation? Anybody new? Anybody going to get a witness in to put somebody on salvation list? All right, on to sickness. I was going to say, somebody's, there's always some. Sister Betty, how are you? Um, Liz, Miss Betty got to witness to her. She's the cake decorator at Roland's in, in Chesapeake. Uh, 
she's having cancer surgery on Monday, and she cannot say, Miss Betty gave her the gospel, please pray for Liz. I know you got to work on her. Brother Struble. Now, are you getting your other one done? Is that a pl is, I know, is that a plan, or is that? The other one will have to be done down the road. Down the road, but there's not. Gotcha. OK. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. OK. So Brother Struble got a good witness in with his physical therapist. He's, the therapist is very happy with his ankle. It's looking really well for what they had done. and. Just keep him in prayer. He continues to heal up. Get him more witness in with that person. Maybe see him get saved. Uh, anybody else in their sickness? Uh, put Michelle on there for sickness. She has got uh, either an infection or an inflamed nerve, um, and it's very painful. So just keep her in prayer. We're going in tomorrow to get it checked. We're praying it's not infected. Yes. Yes. It's where she had her implant. Anyone else? Just a few? Okay, so Karen Williams is also Judy's sister that's been working with uh, Amanda Pugh. Gotcha. She's doing better? Mm -hmm. Amen. That's definitely an improvement. Okay, so keep Karen Williams in prayer. Wait, that was a lady that was here? That's Judy. I was going to say, I was like, hold on a second, I need to bring her in prayer. Okay. Okay, Amanda's co-worker's grandson, Jamari, is in, he's got two churches, he's in one that's very strict, and he's come to the, did he, he come for the play? I, okay, I, I wasn't here. Okay. All right. So keep him in prayer, is he saved? We don't know, all right. All right, so we'll put Jamari under salvation. Uh, but he's got two different churches. What kind of church is it? Is it a Church of Christ? Hmm. Oh, yeah, that, that would make sense. All right, so keep Jamari in prayer. He's in two churches. He's in this one and another one, and just keep him in prayer. He's a good kid. Um, Sister Major. Sister Major's granddaughter, Adriana, in prayer. Um, she
she, you know, when we had VPS last year, she raised her hand that she wanted to be saved, and then we went to deal with her. She didn't want to talk about it, and so, and then she said that she did get saved. Did, did somebody lead her, or did she? Gotcha. Okay, so just keep her in prayer. Yeah, we're just trying to be sure of it. So keep Adriana in prayer. Adriana. I was going to say, it's, it's Adriana, everybody. It's Adriana. If you don't say, if you say Adriana, no, it's Adriana. Like you, never mind. Like if you spell Izzy May wrong, you never hear the end of that one either. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to not get in any more trouble. Salvation or sickness. You have got to be a character to run with Gerald Sita. Gerald Sutek was a, he would go from church to church teaching people how to street preach. He called it the SWAT team for Christ. And it's a sold out guy. Oh, that is not. Yeah, but I, I've never heard of Pastor Terrell Bear, but keep him in prayer. He was with Brother Sutek. He got blood infection and diabetes, and he's pastoring down in Chesapeake, Virginia, so about three hours or so to drive in. So keep him in prayer. Uh, anybody else under sickness? Amen. Keep Jamie Holman in prayer, missionary over in Italy. Uh, he is uh, well on the road to recovery. So keep him in prayer. Keep his wife and children in prayer. Uh, they've had some help with everything, but it's just it's a it's a hard it's a hard thing to go through. Pastor. Whitakers. All right. So keep the Whitakers in prayer. Uh, Sister Whitaker is still recovering, but very slowly. Um, uh, she's in her late 70s and had a couple strokes, so keep her in prayer. And then Lou Andres has got a very aggressive cancer, and if God doesn't heal him, he's going to die. So keep that family in prayer. Um, we pray God heal him, and if it's not God's will that he stay here, that they be able to get things in order. And Anyone else under sickness? Answers to prayer. Sister Betty? Amen. Done fighting the government. <laughs> so, uh, Dina Bowley, who is Granny Franley's daughter, was able to get her disability approved by the government. So thank God for that, that she's done dealing with all that now. Mm. So close to the bottom, Mickey's niece Tiffany is in ICU on a ventilator. Um, 
Tiffany in prayer, and Sister Mickey is up in New York with her trying to take care of it. So keep Sister Mickey in prayer. Keep Sister Mickey's car in prayer. She has a big trip. She's got issues with it. So just keep her in prayer. Uh, what else is prayer? I think I got, I got some good in-laws. I really do. Uh, Michelle's got a big family. They are crazy wild people, and it could be a lot worse. I, I got to spend some time with them on a Thursday night and just I appreciate them. Sister Good Okay. <laughs> yes. Hi. Sister, she, we have more sister, sister Goodman Hyde. We were, we were going through uh, Miss Margaret one time. It was like it was Margaret Clatterbuck Martin, something Clatterbuck something Martin Scoggins. I'm trying to, it's God bless you, sister. We've, we're, it's always good to have you up here. Good to have a smiling face up here. So she, Sister, uh, all right, so Sister Sherry will be up here a good bit more. She had a call, phone call today about something personal, and it was just a big answer prayer. Uh, Sister Struble. All right, keep, what's your last name? Liz Rea, Liz Liz Ray, the ladies with child. Keep her in prayer because she's been trying to have a baby for a long time. That's what you call um. What do they call it? No, not si not situational irony. No. It's a uh, uh, subliminal messaging. <clears throat> subliminal messaging. We're not on the list, so. Anyways, uh, anybody else answer to prayer? Yeah, give it, uh, Sister Birch. It is, it is the answer to prayer. That little pony means the world to that little girl. Good to see God do something and see God answer prayer and for a little kids. God listens to little kids. That's a, there's one thing that I remember they back up and said Mr. Clapp and they said, You get little kids to pray for you. You get little kids to pray for you, you're set. I don't know what it is. Any other answer to prayer? I saw somebody else had a hand up. Answer prayer. Amen. Did not have a heart attack. All right, anybody else? Good, we can keep this going. Uh, Jody Hamrick had her blood work done again, and she is still cancer free, and that's a blessing. Uh, she went through it. I don't know if y'all met her when we had the baby shower, but it, she lost her hair and can't have kids anymore and all this stuff and she's doing better she's getting her strength back getting her drive back going back to work and it's a blessing anyone else answer the prayer Good to answer the prayer. No? all right others anybody got anything else under others uh, ladies with child where do you avoid eye contact elbows all right, working job situations. Sister Birch. All right. Keep Jake in prayer for working job situation. Anyone else? Uh, 
travel. Anybody going anywhere? Sister Major? Gotcha. Okay, so the majors will be gone for about a week. Uh, getting brother major's parents or here's brother major's dad from Florida. Anyone else? All right. I think that's everything. Keep each other in prayer. Um, a lot of people on the road. A lot of people sick. Keep brother Hanson in prayer. He is driving across the country with. Sister Christine, I don't. Well, oh, they flew. They flew. So they're going to be back this. Oh. Gotcha. So keep the Hansons in prayer. They're coming back from their trip early. They're flying in tonight. They're probably in the air now. Uh, <laughs> keep sister, keep sister Sherry in prayer. She needs somewhere else to stay. <laughs> Get hide somewhere. Um, and then uh, sister Vicky's on. She's in Arkansas. Keep her in prayer as well. She enjoys some time with her daughter and. Oh, um, sorry, unspoken. I skipped unspoken. Let me just look at this. One, two, three, four. Four unspoken. And Jesse has an unspoken answer to prayer. All right. Um, the collection plate is in the back. And uh, Brother Struble, you pray for the service tonight, and we'll do another song and get past the preaching. All right, number 15 in your hymnals. Number 15, brethren, we have met to worship. If y'all ever went to King James, they used to sing this every day. That's the only thing I remember as a little kid. I used to go, there's a little, little kid for revival meetings. They would always sing, brethren, we have met to worship. And I always thought it was, it's a good song. Number 15, brethren, we have to, met to worship and adore the Lord our God.
Well, good to see you guys tonight. Um, I don't have much voice, so we'll see what we can do with it. But um, the funeral, is, I guess, I don't know, went well, didn't go well, I don't know. Um, I know that I don't need to make that trip to the, to the gravesite again, that's for sure. First Peter chapter 5. Um, pray for the family. Somewhere along the line, I don't know what happened, but uh, I don't know if you know much about Catholicism. I was the old expression, born a Catholic, raised a Catholic. I was supposed to die a Catholic. And uh, my philosophy is just die a saved one. <laughs> That's my, you know, Catholicism uses what most people do when it doesn't have the proper gospel. They use scare tactics. And if you've been excommunicated, that means that you've been kicked out of the Catholic Church. I understand John 14, 6 talks about, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man may come to the Father but by me. If they say they are the way, then what they're telling you that don't listen to your Bible, listen to what we tell you. But yet if you go in a Dewey Reams Bible and you look, look under John 14, you'll find that there. And so the only thing I knew to do today was it was, it was very hard <laughs> to do anything, but um, you know, everybody was you know, doing this, this, and that. But um, just give them the truth. Jesus Christ is either the way, John 14, am I right? He's, it, he either told you the truth or he lied. Now, listen, I, I don't know about Catholic Church, one from the North Baptist Church. The Baptist Church isn't the way. Jesus Christ is the way. And so the only thing I felt like you could do then is give them Scripture, what the Lord said, and then you take it up with God if you don't like it. So pray for them, if you will. Um, Sister... Um, Oh, now I forgot her name. Sister Mary, thank you. Sister Mary said that uh, she's sorry that she couldn't make it back tonight. Please pray for her. She's a little frail lady that just has a real tough road to tell. They were together 56 years. I, I, I looked at that thing and read the thing that she gave me, and they met. Now, here, here's a perfect date. He took her and met, took her on a date to a youth rally at a Baptist church or a Baptist youth rally. Their dates revolved around church. And so he was saved, and uh, he started dating her when he was 18. She was 16, and they've been married 56 years. So I'd suggest you go and find you a man or find you a woman. Find one in church. Find one that wants to go to church. And... Their first date was a youth rally. I think that's a blessing, man. But all you can do in, in those situations is give them what the Bible says, and all you can say to them is this, I didn't write the Bible. The Bible says this, what you believe and what you don't believe is immaterial. What does it say? So anyway, let's get around that. You ever get to a point in your life where you just get confused and just don't know what to do? You ever get to a point in your life where you go, well, I thought you wanted me to do this, and why am I not doing this and all this? Look at John chapter 14, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 5, and uh, look at verse 10. We'll just, and I'm tired tonight, so 
Um, let's pick it up in 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at verse 10. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto an eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he had suffered while make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Brother Steve, pray for us, please. Amen. You may be seated. Um, you ever, as I said from the beginning of this thing, if you ever got to a place where you just didn't know what to do? I mean, seriously, you got in a predicament, and uh, I've, I've been in those predicaments quite often, but uh, I, I remember being at a blowout one time, and I always thought the blowouts, I don't know what Ben got out of them. That you, obviously, you get, I mean, crackerjack preachers. I mean, honestly, poor God, other than the times that I preach there, they but I, I, I enjoyed the spirit of it. When I talk about the spirit, I mean, those, those people, I remember um, Antoinette sings a song with the choir, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And, you know, she just puts every bit of her in it. And David Peacock decided that he, that's what he wanted. Uh, they had it scheduled. We had a schedule we had to go by. Uh, they, Doc invited them to come down there and sing, but I had to abide by the schedule that, what's his name, Brother, the song leader for them, and whatever his name was, <laughs> who, Durbin, yeah, so brother, he came to me, and he said, pastor, I put her on, put him on that group, well, it just so happened, it landed on David Peacock, he was preaching, I wasn't, uh, I was preaching after him, and David says, oh, I don't want to do that, I said, no, just do it. And he went up and he said, I want to hear that I'm blessed song. <laughs> and they got in there and they started singing, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed walking with Jesus. And I mean to tell you, brother, it got wild in that place. And you say, that's charismatic. No, that's loving God. Amen. That's enjoying God. You know, too many people are in a place where they don't understand things. And uh, one of the guys that was preaching with me was, uh, he's got a little book out. Chuck's got it in the bookstore. Um, Brother Walker. And Brother David Walker stands up on the pew. You say, well, that is wrong. Well, I don't know if it was wrong or not. One foot on the other part, and he got over that thing. And there had to be minimum 100 people running into each other. And I said, one guy, he just was back there, and he was like this, and he's like that. He looked to the left. He couldn't get out. He looked to the right. He couldn't get out. He looked to the front. Obviously, there's two, 300 people in front of him. He turned around, put his foot on the back of the pew, and went to jump, and he was only three foot from the wall. Bam, he hit that wall, and <laughs> he was in a predicament. He didn't know which way to go. You ever been there? You ever been where, what to do when you really don't know what to do? You, do you know what the solution of it is? It's a lot of people that really just don't have any idea. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience. When we get ourselves in situations like that, sometimes we just don't know what to do. Why don't you try doing something? Be patient. Amen. That, you say, well, I got to hurry. This is on God's time. Don't you think God knows it? Don't you think God knows it? Sometimes, and, and Ben, I don't mean to mock those guys down there, but one of them told me one time, he says, I know that I am going to Greece. I said, how do you know that? Well, I was asking God, and I, 
stuck my finger in my Bible, and you say, well, that's mocking. No, I'm not mocking them. But you know what? When Brother Hunter, your dad, and I would go down to Bible when Brother Howard was praying about, do I go to the Philippines? What do I do? You know, he didn't know what to do. God, is that what you want me there? Well, Lord, uh, we'll put a fleece out, and Miss Vicky says, yeah, I'll go. Well, she wasn't ready to take her family. It wasn't about her not wanting to follow her husband. It was about taking care of her family. They, Naomi and them were just little guys. I mean, way little. And this was a, a thing, and she wanted to make sure it was God. And we'd go down there, and uh, Brother Hunter and I got to praying and talking to some people down there, and he said, well, Brother so-and-so who's here, talk to me about this. Brother so-and-so talk to me about his time in Vietnam. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, you don't want to talk to people that are here. You want to talk to people that listen to me and are doing what God gave them to do. Because the people that didn't make it, maybe they weren't doing what they're supposed to do when they were supposed to. You see, it's more than just what, it's when and why and how. It's more than just what to do when you really don't know what to do. You know what the, the thing of it is? Is we're just not patient. The Bible says, wait on God. What? This I say. You ever tried to do that? You say, well, it drives me crazy. It'll, I tell you, you'd be better off if you just wait on God. Amen. You better know it's God. You better understand it's God. You better make sure. And when, hey, and when you're about ready to take the step, do one more thing. Get down on your knees. Say, Lord, I'm getting ready to make a mess if you're not in this. Help me. Amen. Help me with this. You say, why? Because everyone will tell you this and that. This is how you do it, and that's how you do it. Your friends will try to encourage you. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, yeah, sister, do this. No, you better wait on God. You better make sure it's God that told you to do something. You better make sure God's in it. Say, why? Because if God ain't in it, you're in a mess. Yes, sir. Hebrews 10.35 says, Cast not away, therefore, thy confidence, which hath God wrecked great recompense of reward. Verse 36, for we have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. A man was out in, you ever been caught in traffic jam? Thank God, I, I know you're loving staying home right now, not fighting over there where you were on the other side of the bridge. Brother Steve, you used to have to drive over there. What a nightmare that, going to a construction site, what a nightmare that was over there. It was like, you know, Lord, drive a nail through my head so I don't have to go there anymore. But you know what you need? You need patience. And this young man, uh, he, he, the most embarrassing situation, you pull up to a light and your car conks out. And you turn that key and it goes, not a chance. It didn't say that. It just... <laughs> Nothing goes. You ever had that happen to you? Chuck, you've been on the road a lot of times. You ever had that happen? Man, that ain't any fun. No fun whatsoever. And so he gets out there, and all these cars start getting behind him. The light changes, and people are starting to beep the horns. They're impatient. And they, the guy doesn't know what to do. He flips up his hood. He tightens up on the battery cables, and he's pulling it and trying to do everything. Jumps in the car, and it goes, Dah. And he's like, oh, God, help me, help me. I can't push the car. I can't move the car. I don't know what to do. And these people, by this time now, there's people all behind him yelling at him, get your car out of the way. Finally, the guy figured it out what to do. You know what he did? He ran. He got out of his car, went to the car behind him, and said, sir, if you'll do me a favor, if you'll go up there and sit in my car, and try to start it, I'll promise I'll stay behind here and beep the horn. You know, people just sometimes don't know what to do when they know. It, you say, what do you do? Wait on God. Know that God's telling you. Make sure you get some scriptural guidance. Amen. There's an old expression, when in doubt. When in doubt. Somebody said, do it, smarty. 
That's how it gets you in trouble. When in doubt, don't. Exercise patience. James chapter 1, verse 3, knowing this at the trying of your faith, what does it do? Worketh. What? Oh, it does. You ever had your faith tried? Have you ever been tested? If you're endeavoring, listen, brethren, this isn't, this isn't cute, but you ever stop to think, if you're trying to do something for God, you don't think the devil wants to stop it? You don't think he doesn't want to challenge you? He does. I've told you the same old lame story, but uh, there were two guys named the Burrell brothers, and they were God the Father and the Holy Spirit, I guess they thought they were. But he looks at me, and I was, how old was I when I went to Bible school? 39 years old. I was one month away from 40. You say, you're pretty late. I'm always late, but the point of it was he looked at me and he said, how old are you? I said, well, I'll be um, uh, 40 years old in October. Well, I'm leaving to go to school in September. And so he says, uh, uh, aren't you a little old for this? I said, I didn't know there was a criteria on age when you're trying to do something for God. And oh, by the way, I'm trying not to go. I'm trying not to go. I, you think I, w I wouldn't go to school when I wasn't saved. Why would I want to go to school now? And then, oh, by the way, if you can't pass English, you can't take Greek, and you must take, oh, come on. I, he looks at me, and he says, I'm going to Millbrook, Alabama. And we go to school two nights a week, Wednesday night for church. We have a couple hours after that, and another night. And he says, how many nights do you have to go? Well, Ben, correct me. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? But if you didn't like English when you were growing up like I did, <laughs> you have to go to Miss Meacham on Friday. I said, I'm not taking the test. It's why. I said, I'm going to just enroll on Friday night. It's not going to happen. And he says, how do you think you're going to do it? Let me say something to you, friend. If God told you to do it, he'll give you the strength and the guidance to get it taken care of. If you turn it over to God, what to do when you don't know what to do, do what that guy can. Just get out of the control. Put someone else in the control of the car. Listen, you say, put God back in the place where he is in control, and you won't make a mistake. The problem is, is that we get locked in on ourselves and God's got to use us. you got to learn to exercise some patience. The Bible says wait on God. Does I say wait? We, we have a problem waiting on God. Let me tell you something. God's not in a hurry. He knows the past, present, and the future. He knows what obstacles you're going to face. He knows what way it's going to go. But listen, you're going to have to put in practice if you're going to serve God, learning to listen to him. And God speaks in a lot of ways. He speaks through the Holy Spirit. He speaks through the Scriptures. But you're going to have to learn to do that. Exercise some patience. Be patient, patiently awaiting for his calling, patiently awaiting for his instruction. Patience. It's something we don't have. We live in a fast order society, don't we? We're, we're upset. I remember Jim White telling me one time, Jim White's one of the funniest preachers you ever, you, if you're ever down in the dumps and you feel like, man, I don't know which way to go, put on Jim White. He will crack you up. I'm he, he was hilarious. But I, I remember Jim telling me about this place. He was on his way to go preach somewhere, and he was always running late trying to get to the airport, trying to get on the plane. And on the way, he decided, you know what? He said, I'm going to stop and get me a breakfast meal at McDonald's. And he, uh, he said he got in there, and first of all, they, uh, they messed his order up. He got halfway down the road and found out they didn't put stuff in his coffee Gave him the wrong sample. You ever done that? You ever done that? They gave you the wrong meal? Well, Jim turned around. He said, by this time, I'm hot. I'm fuming. I'm mad. I'm, I'm getting ready to lose my testimony. 
And he goes back in there, and he tells that lady, do you know what you did? <laughs> he said, I done lost my testimony. There ain't no sense in giving her a track. I'm not going to, she ain't going to listen to anything I said. And he said, you know what? He said, she gave me, they gave me a free meal for it. I didn't miss my plane. And oh, by the way, there was an accident that was an avoided that I might have been a part of. Learn to have some patience. Patience is a, a great thing. Still waiting. Waiting, yes, waiting. To hear with the inner hearing the voice of the one who called for me. Waiting, quietly waiting. No need for anxious dread. Shall he not assuredly guide me? He giveth me daily bread. Waiting, yes, hopefully waiting. With hope that need not grow dim, the, the master has pledged to guide me, my eyes and unto him. Waiting, yes, trustfully waiting. That's the part. I know through thought I have waited long that while he withholds his purpose, his weight cannot be wrong. God's never wrong. He'll guide you the right way if you'll be patient with him. Amen. Say, so what else? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Did I, am I keeping y'all awake? Keeping me awake anyway. <laughs> by prayer and what? And supplication. With, let your requests be made known unto your, your husband, your wife, your friends, your no. Why don't, you put them, why don't you put them in front of God? I think sometimes, Sister Betty, we're afraid to take it to God because we're afraid of the answer he'll give. You say, I'll run over and find out what Jesse thinks. Well, what difference was it Jesse thinks if God doesn't think that way? Why put Jesse in that predicament? You're put, what you're doing is you're asking Jesse to intercede for God. No. Don't put him in that situation. Well, what do you think about this? Why don't you go to God? You already know what God says. You already read your Bible. You've already been in the Bible. You've already prayed about it. And you know what he wants. You just don't want to do it. You know why people won't pray about something? Because they don't want to hear the answer. I've been there, brethren. I'm not telling you something I haven't done. I've been there, and the Lord said, I love what Rex Harrison said, not you again, Harrison. <laughs> I'm sure the Lord, every once in a while, it, it, it becomes humorous to him. Remember what I told you the last time? I'm, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. I'm not going to change my answer. You, you think I didn't know what you were going to do? And you, That's the problem with God. I find, Ben, is that God knows what you're going to ask before you ask it, and he knows the intent of your heart, and he knows what you're... And, and we still try to do that shuck and job story with God, and you can't do it. You're going to have to learn to go in there by prayer and lay it down before him and say, God, give me guidance. Help me. Many people won't, don't pray as they should, they become so engulfed in what to do, and then they don't ask God anymore because they don't trust God. They trust their instincts more. Well, I just know. You ever talk to them? I just know there's a need. I know there's a need too. Well, let me tell you something. God knew there was a need before you ever thought of it. And you know what no means? Think about it. What is the definition of no? Come on. Some of you, thanks, Steve. I appreciate your help. I can't get no help from anyone else. But no means no. It simply means no. Well, Lord, you don't know what. You come to. I, I'm, please help me. I'm tired. But we got. I've done this, but Lord, you don't understand. Is God, Ben, an omniscient God? 
Would you define omniscient for me? Well, why do we go back and say, Lord, but you don't understand the circumstances. The Lord says, oh, yeah, I know the beginning. I know the middle, and I know the ending, and I know the outcome of all of it's going to be. Amen. <laughs> but, Lord, <laughs> I tell you what, you might as well go beat your head up the side of a brick wall than to try to get God to change his mind on a subject. I'm God. I doeth all things well. Amen? Does he do everything right? Does he do everything well? Amen. Prayerfully. Right decisions come when you ask God. Listen to God. But what the last part of it? When you wait on God. Sometimes we try to outrun God. Well, I know what God says. He said there's a need. I know what the Scripture says. Wait on me, this I say. This I say, wait. That's a tough deal. We're, we're, I mean, we're a caffeine, sugar-fed society. I mean, we can't move without our, you know, what is that? Coffee place. Starbucks? I can't, I can't even move without my Starbucks in the morning. I got to have four donuts before I can even open my mouth. It's, this is the society we're in. Who was I talking to? Chuck, was it you and I talking to you? You don't think it has more than a couple of years left in this old world? I was talking to somebody. I don't remember who it was. But you know what? It's, it's, really, it's really crazy. You know what? There's nothing better than putting God in charge. Hey, Lord, you told me to ask you. You said it. I have it right here. I got your word right here. You said it. Now, and he says, I also said, wait. <laughs> You're not going to trap him. What to do when you really don't know what to do? Don't forget to pray. And then, hey, how about this? Well, I prayed and I did it. Wait on God. This I say, did you wait? No, you didn't want instruction. You wanted what you wanted. Being prayerful. Right decisions come when you ask God, but not when you just ask, when you listen to God. And then when God will do something, through the scriptures, through the spirit of God, he'll direct you. Amen. Like I said, I'm tired. Prayer is a mighty instrument, not for getting man's will done in heaven. But you know what it is? It's getting God's will done on earth. God, God listen, if God has something he wants you to do, you rest assured that he'll take care of the situation. Well, I'm going to cut this a little bit. Number three, try being positive. You ever? <laughs> I'm getting some of these weirdest looks. I'm going to look over here. <laughs> Y'all <all> weird too? <laughs> but the, the, the deal of it is, is look, has God ever let anybody here down? Anything, he said, come to me, all you labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest, cash my, so forth. Did he do what he said he'd do? When you were lost, undone, without hope and without God, Isaac, did he save you? Yes, he did. The whole premise of what I was trying to get across to these people today from the word of God is, I didn't write the Bible, but I certainly can read a little bit of English. And what we do is, we're a King James Bible church. How about this? A King James Bible doer church. Be a doers of the word, not hearers only. You ever tried to just do what it says? Be positive. 
I'm on God's team. Keep a good attitude about things. I talk to a lot of preachers that I respect. Tim Green be with us in about a month, the second through the fourth. I, I, I really appreciate his friendship. Um, Tim was the one who called me and asked me um, if he needed Brother Jim McGahee's meeting to switch with ours. Brother McGahee had messed up and did something. He said, would you do it for me? And I said, sure, we'll, we'll take care of it for you. And Brother McGay, he says, thank you, folks, for doing that. And, but Tim Green is a, a gentleman among gentlemen, believe me. Uh, Miss Diane, probably her favorite preacher, Sarah, are you jealous? No, she chose a good one. Um, but the point of it is, brethren, uh, Tim Green knows something. You want to learn how to live for God? Dr. Ruckman said, if you're starting a small church and you're first starting out, that's the best man to put in your pulpit. He'll come through and he'll help you and he'll bless you. And I, I appreciate the friendship that I've had with Tim over the years. Uh, I find him to be a gentleman. Um, but brethren, let me say that you ought to be positive. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Not knowing what to do often brings, as I said before, discouragement. It'll knock you down. It's a, I believe not knowing what to do is that sort of that little slit that the devil can get in there and start to try to work on you with. I believe he did it back in Genesis and worked on them. But you know what? You, you have to stay in tune with God and keep going with God Try just saying, you know what? He's never led me wrong. He's never showed me wrong. It's when I step out of listening and reading and prayerfully going to him is when I make mistakes. That's when I blow it. You think so? Be positive. I tell you something that happens when you don't know what to do, and be productive. Do something. Say, well, Lord didn't show. Just, you, you think he'd be upset with you, Andy, if you led someone to Jesus Christ? I don't think so. Well, I wasn't in what the line of what I was. Hey, we ought to reproduce. Amen. Uh, how about try to help somebody? You ever just thought, well, you know, Lord's blessing me, and I'm not talking just finances. Uh, Lord's given me good health. Lord's done this. Lord. Maybe I can be an, an encouragement to them and help them and lift them up and show them what God has done for them. I, I see Jonathan. He has, he's, he's having a hard time staying home because he's always trying to be productive. I've never seen him in the store when I go in there. He's always, you know, somebody else is carrying the the little flat board that he writes things down on. He's carrying the stuff and directing and doing it. He's being productive. Just because you don't know what to do, you do know it's okay to win souls. You do know it's okay to invite people to come to church. You do know it's okay to do the right things, right? You shouldn't stop those. Well, I'm waiting on God. You're waiting on God for what? Waiting, a, well, I'm waiting for that big decision. While you're waiting on the big decision, how about just doing the minor things? That wouldn't hurt, would it? I, I'm really proud of Alan stepping up to the plate and saying, hey, I'll take the door thing. You say, what? Because it's, it's a great project. It's a great thing to do. But can I say this? It's not flamboyant. It's not the spider hanging right there. Hello? <laughs> It's, <laughs> I'm serious, the dude's hanging right there. <laughs> but it's, it's not, well, 
It's not like leading 10 people to the Lord. No, but you can be encouraging to other people. You can be productive in the sense, you can be positive. How to avoid frustration. Keep your shoulder to the wheel, your hand to the helm, your eye on the ball, your nose to the grindstone, your ear to the ground, and you will not have time to do anything else. Put your foot in your mouth. Be patient and wait on God. Brethren, someone said the seeking for patience is doing something else in the meantime. What you've been waiting for and what you've been worrying about will be taken care of. Why? Because God has an obligation. You've taken it to him. Take it to the Lord. You know what you need to do with it? Leave it there. Give it to him. Lord, I want to know. I want you to show me. And I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to keep doing what I'm supposed to do, is, is whether witnessing, teaching, doing everything I'm supposed to do, but I'm just going to wait on you. I'm not going to be influenced and pushed into it. I want your will to be in that. And God will show you what to do. I want to wait. And I told you I wouldn't say anything more about it, and I'm not. I went away with one mindset and come back with a different. I said, Lord, I'm tired of playing with it. I'm just going to wait on you, period. I'm just going to wait. Say anything else. Well, well, suppose you did this. Well, I don't have guidance to do that right now, so I'm not going to. Wait on God, brethren. He'll never steer you wrong. Say, so what happens when things come down and they go on? They might be there to test you, but you know what you do? Keep your eye on the ball. Amen? I don't play much golf. In fact, I haven't played in years. I've got golf clubs, golf shoes, golf balls. I just don't have golf feet. <laughs> but what I've learned, golf is a game of patience. Because if you're impatient, you're not going to do very well. You trust him with your soul. Am I right? You trust him with your soul. You trust him with your soul. Why don't you trust him with the life he's given you? Let him take the steering wheel. Let him make the choices. Because he does all things, all things well. Right? Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the things that you showed us. Lord, that you're in control. And all we got to do is give you the steering wheel. All we got to do, Lord, is allow you to do what you do best. Lord, some need guidance, some need patience, some need to be productive and not let things pull them down or to make them digress. Lord, I've seen it, I've watched it, I've enjoyed it myself. It's not fun. But God, we, we want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the people that were at the funeral today. Thank you, Lord. And I, I'm not here to mock nor laugh nor make fun of them, but help them to see the intent of thy word. The Bible says it gives life, but I say also it gives hope. And Father, I pray that the words that were said through the scriptures, the scriptures that were read would seek into their hearts. And let them see without Jesus Christ, they're hidden for a dead man's hell. And God didn't do that. He, he designed it that he, we could have heaven, that we could be where he is and abode with him forever. So Father, just pray you'll give guidance and patience to our people. Give them wisdom to listen and wait on you. The Bible says, seek ye out the word of the Lord and read. We're to study it, we're to store it. But, Lord, we'll start to let it work in our life. and He'll give us the guidance. Well, thank you for it all, Lord. Thank you for the day you've given us in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.